All righty, I have a construction update for you guys today um, on some new survey markings, which I don't know if they're for 2025 or 2026. I'm going to assume 2026, but who knows? Uh, but firstly, Moosehorn Falls is starting to actually move quickly. They've had a couple days off because of the weather, but it looks like they utilized those two days off um, very wisely. So they've put in the staircases. Um, started finishing up the staircase with the railings and all that, as you can see there, and laid down the rebar for the pool bottom. Now, that's the hard part, because coming in and pouring concrete, that can take literally half a day. So this is a really good sign, seeing the rebar in the pool base um, when I went in to film this update today. So that's exciting, because we're waiting on this company to finish Moosehorn for 2025 to start. Um, so it'll be really exciting once that starts. So over in the 2025 construction area, there is no signs of construction, but that is expected. They're not starting until Moosehorn is done. Um, so that will be that. Um, no signs in the mound, nothing. There is some rebar cages stored in the mound just off to the right of this concrete wall. Um, but that's that. <laughs> Nothing else to report there, but there is a ton of new survey markings. So um, you'll notice these, and these are really interesting ones. So these are kind of like swing radius markings. These are usually placed when something is going to be moving in this area that they're designing or building, and they're tracking the distance from that object. We saw these same markings um, for Tundra Twister, we saw these same markings on Vortex's supports for Yukon Strikers Drop, and we saw these same markings currently for the 2025 project on the Guardian supports where those 157 column markings are. So again, um, when something's going to be passing by um, and really close to it, they are they need to track the distances from that moving object. So. It doesn't, to me, scream 2025 because um, it's over in that station. It dives into the mountain. The ride show no signs of coming over here, nor do I expect it to. But um, there are some, some over by the 2025 area, by the way. But it does scream possibly the removal of possibly the bumper cars. So the bumper cars is a really complex attraction that requires a lot of maintenance. They have to get that ground, you know, cleaned and professionally done every so often uh, they can't run it during Winterfest anymore and I think that the park is going to obviously eye some sort of flat ride to go in its location for example a scream and swing would be amazing in that location um, but that's just a, that's just a prediction so it could be for 2026 because you know 2026 we're looking at possibly a kids expansion based off of surveying we saw go on over there so now maybe we're also going to see a flat ride um, over in the bumper car area. And you know Zamperla, they have some flat rides too. So it could end up being one of Zamperla's flat ride packages for 2026. Um, but yeah, the whole area, Alpen, looks like it's going to be getting an upgrade. And that's all I was showing with those survey markings. Because along with the brand new coaster, the whole area now has survey markings all over it. Now the Food and Wine Festival, I'm going to be honest, I was really impressed at how it turned out. I had really low hopes based off of the location, um, kind of how quickly they were setting it up, but they did a really good job. And honestly, I really like this location for hosting the festivals. Everything just flowed seamlessly. Um, it looked great. I liked the lights over the area, and I liked how they utilized um, Grand World Eatery's patio uh, the right side for the event as well with those beautiful lights that you see there. So that was really awesome to see. Um, I didn't end up getting to try any of the wine. I wasn't feeling great, so I didn't actually end up doing it. I wanted to, uh, but I wasn't feeling so great. So I decided not to um, as I had to drive and I didn't want to risk anything. So I opted out of it. So I can't give you any opinions on the, uh, the wine and the food. Um, but I, I have to say, I really like the setup. They definitely put a lot of effort into it. And they had a paint by numbers wall, which you're about to see in a second. That was really cool. Guests got to participate in it for free. And essentially, they were painting the logo of the Food and Wine Festival. And when complete, it was a really nice, um, cool little thing. Um, so yeah, I was impressed. I liked how it turned out. Um, my only complaint, I guess, would be... It didn't really make sense that a guest would want to come to Wonderland for local wines. So it was centered around Ontario wines, which makes sense. But on the argument I'm trying to counter with right now, it doesn't make sense. Why would you go to a food and wine festival at Canada's Wonderland that's going to be a little more costly to experience the same wine that you can go to the LCBO to get? 
Um, so I would like to see them in World uh, um, Grand World Expo utilize wines and stuff from around the world. I think that would be a lot more um, appropriate slash uh, draw kind of a bigger crowd. Um, that's it, I guess, for today's update. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good one. Bye.